All right. Let's do this. Boom. Let's do this without hearing myself back. Let me just fiddle with my microphone for a minute while I get everything going here. All right. All right. This is it. Programming stream number one. We are live. We are doing it today. We're, we're programming for the PlayStation 2. This is going to be incredible. Okay, for people who don't know, the PlayStation 2 is a ridiculous console. Uh, it's very, very hard to work with. It's very, very hard to program for. There are really cool libraries out there that do a lot of the work for us. Today, I'm going to be basically ignoring those. I'm going to be doing stuff the hard way. We're going to be writing C. We're going to be building buffers and poking them around into all different uh, parts of the PlayStation 2's memory. It's going to be a lot of fun. The goal is to get a triangle to show up on the screen. And that might actually be ambitious uh, for today. We'll see how we go. We'll see how we go. I need to fiddle with my microphone for like a second longer here. All right, so, uh, do you like that spinny cube? That was cool. That was, uh, <laughs> oh, that was a few minutes in the Godot engine earlier today. All right, what do we got? We've got an empty project. The, the sky is the limit here. Um, so, first things first, let's just, like, compile something for a PlayStation 2. Um, right, this is going to look a lot like just any C function, uh, any, any C code, right? We're going to start simple. We're going to start very, very simple. Uh, okay, so I have a really helpful Docker image installed. Uh, it's a slightly customized version of the official... official. Let's start at the beginning here. PlayStation 2 SDK is an open source uh, toolchain for... Uh, toolchain plus standard library for C and C++ for building PlayStation 2 software. Uh, it does a lot of the really, really low-level hard stuff for you, but pretty much just gives you an environment where you can do things like, like, cool printf, right? Which is surprisingly non-trivial with a PlayStation 2. Um, so I'm going to compile it using that, and I'm going to... I've got a bit of, like, weird black crap on my finger there. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, cut some of these first steps out, okay? Let's compile something that's run on a PlayStation 2. Huge. Uh, what are we doing? What are we doing? So I can actually build it. Okay, look. We'll get around this as we go. Uh, for now, let's actually run code on a PlayStation 2. Isn't this exciting? Uh, we can run an elf. We can go into my wonderful profile here. Uh, workspace, PlayStation 2, 3D test, test.elf. Oh, hold on. I don't want you, like, seeing all my... Did that? Okay, and it's a bad... It's a bad elf. It's badly behaved. It's, oh dear. <laughs> I've never seen that running in Elf before. Uh, no make run. Well, okay, so so for now I'm doing this with the PlayStation 2 emulator. Um, I'm going to move across to a real PlayStation 2 eventually. I've got a PlayStation 2, it's in the living room. I don't have like a capture card set up. Uh, I, I will at some point buy a second PlayStation 2, get it in here, get it hooked up to my PC. Uh, my, my brand new PC, by the way. This is, what, week two of owning this PC. Week two of running Linux as my main machine. Uh, so, so it's an exciting time, and, and it's kind of because I've got everything Linux now that I was inspired to actually get on and do a programming stream. Uh, so we've got an elf, and we've, we've got an elf that is behaving badly, uh, which is weird. So let's go, let's go a step further uh, with this, because I don't know how PS2, uh, PCSX2 actually really handles running elves. I don't know what, like, there's not anything particularly... Uh, I don't know. I don't know exactly what's happened here. It looks like it's mounting it to a disc. I don't know. Something seems weird. So, wrote the wrong hello. Uh, what do you mean the wrong? Try mine. What? What? Have you sent me something? I'm not. Uh, not seeing it in Discord. Ah, cool, cool, cool. Uh, expand. Yeah. SCR printf is okay. I would rather get away with not using SCR printf if I can. I mean, it, it works, right? So, yeah. Um, let's, let's do this instead. 
Yeah, thank you. I, I've I've got it. I've got it. Um, uni STD. Does uni? It? Okay, hold on. You've actually inspired me to just try something else. Does sleep uh, come from uni STD? I'm actually just gonna sleep for a second or whatever, or like a, a millisecond, however long that is. Um, and just see if that fixes it. Because sometimes you just need a bit of time for a PlayStation 2 to work its stuff out. But I'm guessing it might also just be that the IOP modules are never getting properly loaded. Yeah. So, they read that it had to sleep. Yeah, PlayStation 2s are pretty fickle with this stuff. Um, weird. Well, look. Printf is a fickle beast. And Printf is fickle because uh, the the path to output on a PlayStation 2 is complicated, okay? So like to to get just to Printf, uh, let's 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 do some drawing. Let's do some drawing. So if you have an EE, right? This is like your core. You'll have to excuse my horrific handwriting. Uh, you have like vector units off to the side, vector unit zero, vector unit one. Uh, these connect up to the, the graphics interface. And this is like your entry point to the graphics synthesizer, which is the this GPU, but it's really more of a rasterizer, right? It doesn't really do GPU stuff. It, it's just putting putting triangles out onto the screen. Um, but then there's also the IO processor, right? Which uh, actually does like IO stuff, <laughs> right? So. I, I believe, I, I don't know what path things have to take to re reach system output, um, but I'm fairly sure it comes via the IO processor, right? An entirely separate processor that somehow, like it sends this stuff off to somewhere, right? Uh, and these are connected via RAM. They're not like directly connected. These, these arrows are very, very like misleading about how this stuff actually is rigged up. Um, because all these parts communicate via RAM, except for EE core and, and the first vector unit, which are coprocessors. But also, they can communicate via RAM. It's complicated. It's complicated. Um, so, so there's something in in like this part uh, <laughs> of of this setup that is not working here for this printf. So what we're going to do is we're going to forget printf, and instead we're going to just try and init initialize the graphics synthesizer uh, and push some information to it from the EE core through the, the GIF, uh, which means we're going to have to build a thing called a, a GIF tag. We're going to have to initiate a DMA transfer, a direct memory transfer from EE core memory into the GIF. Uh, and this is called a this is called path three for rendering. And there's also path one, which comes from vector unit one. There's also path two, which is uh, via the controller for vector unit one. Path 2 is weird. Path 2 is also what lets you read information out from graphics memory back to main memory. But we're going to do the simplest thing, uh, and I say simplest, nothing about this is going to be simple, but we're going to send just some raw packets of data from EE Core into GIF, we're going to initialize the graphics synthesizer, and then we're going to try, we're going to try really, really hard to push one whole triangle out onto the screen, okay? Uh, so, what's this going to look like? Uh, <laughs> what is this going to look like? So, let's throw on comment style. Uh, we're going to have to initialize a graphics mode, right? So we're going to have to spend, send some, uh, some specially crafted packets to the graphics synthesizer that are going to tell it how to set up its internal registers for drawing to, you know, 640 by 480 NTSC signal. That's kind of what we're going to target, right? Uh, <laughs> this this one comment is going to turn into a lot of code. Uh, we're going to have to clear the screen, okay? We're going to want some way of clearing the screen, which is going to be, again, not obvious. There are there are two ways uh, to approach it, as far as I'm aware, and they're both pretty tricky. Uh, and then we're going to actually build a buffer with triangle data in it. At first, we're just going to have one triangle, but that's going to start us off. It's going to be okay. We're going to DMA it over. Uh, I guess all of these things are going to end in DMA transfer, right? I guess before this even, we have to initialize uh, the DMA controller as well then. So there's going to be a lot of stuff happening in the, in the next few minutes. <laughs> it's going to be pretty crazy. It's going to be pretty crazy. Okay, so. Uh, where do we start?
we're going to put a print at the start. We're going to put a nice simple print at the start. And uh, then we're going to go straight in. Okay, so. To initialize the DMA controller, there are, there are two channels that we're going to... Uh, there's one channel, sorry, that we're going to use. Uh, comments about PAL for European coders. So I'm, I'm Australian. I'm from a PAL region. I've grown up playing PAL games. Um, I like 640 by 480 as a resolution, okay? Uh, don't don't hate me, <laughs> right? It's just a bit more standard. Like, it's 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 closer. And, and NTSC uh, PlayStation 2s, like, they're usually rendering at, what, like 664 by 448 or something, or 664 by 480. Um, as far as the PlayStation 2 is concerned, I want to target 60 FPS. You know, I've grown up playing the weird, janky 50 FPS versions of games. Um, at least in the PlayStation 2 era, games run the same between PAL and NTSC, but they feel a lot more responsive on NTSC, in my opinion. So these days, when I replay like Ratchet and Clank, Jack and Daxter, uh, I, I do it exclusively on the NTSC version. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it feels better. I replayed a little bit of PAL Kingdom Hearts the other day, and the game just feels choppy compared to uh, NTSC, right? I don't know. Maybe I'm just crazy, but like that extra 10 FPS, it really makes a difference. Uh, so we need to tell the PlayStation that we're going to use DMA channels, and we're going to use PS2 SDK functions for this. Uh, DMA channel initialize. Right, we, we need to tell it that we're going to send information over the GIF. Uh, and then we have this other cool function, which is going to tell it that we're not going to do anything too fancy. We're just going to... Uh, <laughs> like, don't... Uh, fast waits. I can't remember exactly what this means, but you just set it because it's good. Um, now, there are a few structures we're going to uh, initialize because we're going to use some, again, some PS2 SDK functions. We're going to send... Uh, actually, the, honestly, this needs to be its own function. So, uh, we're going to add parameters to the... We're going to add arguments, rather, to this function as we go. Uh, so, the first function we're going to do, graph... VRAM allocate. Uh, this takes a width, height, uh, P a, a mode for PSM. It's well, let's just say PSM for now, uh, and an alignment, uh, <laughs> uh, an alignment argument. So we're we're gonna allocate memory in VRAM, and we're gonna put uh, we're gonna set up our frame buffer. We're gonna set up something to draw to Thundermonk. Hello, thank you. Good to see some of the Quake fans drop, stopping by. What am I coding? This is going to be PlayStation 2 3D graphics, eventually. It's going to take a little bit of time to get there. Um, but, you know, come in, check it out, stay along for the ride. Uh, it's going to be huge. Uh, cool. So, uh, I can't remember what type this returns. It might be an unsigned int. But we'll just call it an unsigned int for now. Uh... We want to remember this. We want to remember this. Uh, we also maybe want to check... VRAM. Yeah, nah. We don't care. We don't care. Uh, no. So there's a function we can use that I've used in the past to actually like check uh, how much how much size this would take, but, but we're not going to track VRAM allocation for now. Uh, we're also going to allocate a z-buffer. Uh, um, say... Spelling's hard. Uh, and this is going to be, like, the same. Except this slight, slight difference, slight difference. And we'll talk a little bit about what these mean in a second. So, uh... Let's let's pull up another window over here. Uh, cool. So grip. Uh, what are we looking for? Uh, the the GSPSM arguments here that we can pass. Where is it? Common include GSPSM. Dot H. Uh, so there's uh, these uh, 
graph ram gra graphics ram allocate functions they, they take this parameter as well as a width and a height and this is basically to do with uh pixel depth right uh so how many bits per pixel so these are all the different image modes i guess that uh, we care about drawing and when it comes to the z buffer you know do we want a 32 bit per pixel z buffer probably not that sounds a little bit excessive uh what what's the vim color scheme it's called icebox uh hold on let me pull up my dot file for you real quick config and vim uh where are we? I, it's called iceberg sorry iceberg and this is my own custom uh config line as well which i i like to flex on so we've got a frame buffer we've got a z buffer um there are again we're gonna fall back onto ah well we need to set a video mode as well and this is actually also really fun um let's let's um let's copy this bit of code so this this is a line that comes directly from uh ps2 sdk i'm going to pull it out into my own function there is a ps2 sdk function which does some of this but i'm going to redo it because it's a bit more interesting so uh where are we v mode equals uh Actually, no, forget it, forget it. Let's forget it. Let, we, we, want, we need a V mode as well. So let's start building out what arguments we're actually going to take here. We're going to take a width. We're going to take a height. We're going to take a PSM, which is like a bits per pixel kind of. We're going to take a PSM Z, which is like the, the pixel depth of our Z buffer. Uh, we are going to take a video mode. And we're going to take a G mode, which is like a, which is going to be interlaced or non-interlaced. Uh, cool. Oh, that's fine that's fine so now we now we call some more ps2 sdk functions v mode okay so let's find the definition for graph set mode while we're going uh cool interlaced mode uh and then these last two parameters again it, it just just find an example and copy it okay uh set up how show how we can set up some vu1 shaders absolutely this is what i'm building to i'm gonna start with uh with path three going through uh e core directly to the gif then i am going to uplift it into a path one simple renderer i'm gonna start just pushing geometry through it then i'm gonna do some more stuff i i have not written vector unit assembly for lighting and stuff before but i know how it will work i can visualize it i've just got to get there uh, so we're going to speed up a little, okay? We've got another uh, a another fun <laughs> function from PS2 SDK, if I can spell screen correctly. Uh, we're going to have an offset, which I'm actually going to put in like this this kind of define variable, uh, right? This is something we're going to configure once. Uh, I find it's really odd setting offsets for the PlayStation 2 that 0, 0 rarely seems to be correct, uh, but this is kind of a trial and error. We'll see what we get. We'll, we'll play with different things. Uh, what else do we need? This actually has a function to do with clearing, but this is only a step towards actually clearing the screen. Uh, then we have to tell it uh, where the frame buffer lives frame buffer filtered uh which takes fb address it takes a width it takes a psm and then we pass it in two zeros that do something uh where are we graph set frame buffer filtered it takes an x and a y uh so we're basically just telling it that there's no like top left corner offset here right and then graph set Huh. Interestingly, uh, I don't seem to use the Z buffer here. From I, I don't know, the example I'm following doesn't seem to actually use its Z buffer. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, graph enable output. So behind the scenes, this is um, this is sending some messages around. So let's go e graph source graph.c line 22 uh this, this is essentially the 
function where <laughs> we're duplicating. Uh, where was this defined? Sorry. So, and this is PS2 SDK, and this is some of the amazing work that people have already done. Uh, weird that the definition for that doesn't seem to... Oh no, hold on. Graph mode.c, there it is. Uh, enable output. So, I don't know, it's, it's cooling down further and further into the library. Uh, set output. So this is setting a, a special register, right? Because the, uh, the PlayStation 2 has a lot of like, like the graphic synthesizer has a lot of registers in it. Um, some of them are mapped, uh, if not all of them are mapped into uh, main memory somewhere that the EE can actually access them and directly set them. So if we look th if we look this up, this will be defined as a volatile pointer to just some completely arbitrary uh, <laughs> place in memory. And you can just write a value to it and it does something. So things like that aren't really fun and they aren't that exciting. And so it's cool that we have functions that, that wrap that behavior so we don't have to worry about it. Um, there is one more thing that we need to do here, okay? And now things are going to start to get a little bit more involved. Um, we're going to make a quad word buffer, <laughs> okay? Uh, and we're going to make it like 20 quad words long. So a quad word, four words, that's going to be uh, 128 bits, okay? So this is an array of 128 bit things. Uh, and actually, I don't know if we can initialize it like this. I don't know if we have a 128 bit type. Let's find out. Let's find out. So, uh, quad word t q. So what we're going to do, we're going to put things into this buffer and then we're going to uh, DMA this buffer to the graphic synthesizer. All right. Uh, and so we're going to, we're going to take a pointer to like the, the head of our buffer and we're going to shove some stuff into this buffer. Uh, draw primitive x, y, Q zero uh, cool. So actually you know what? Let's just let's just settle this to zero and see what happens. Um th this is like an offset for every XY point. I've seen this set to various numbers like two oh four eight. Lots of examples seem to use two oh four eight here. Um I don't know, I'm just gonna go with zeros for now. Okay. Uh so let me show you what these functions do, because these functions are a little bit more interesting than the ones I've been talking about before. Okay, so let's grep RNI. And for people who haven't seen this before, by the way, if you want to find uh, stuff in a directory, like like this code base is pretty big. You know, there's a lot of files, there's a lot of subfolders. Um, if you want to find things, grep dash RNI, that is recursive uh, something something. I can't remember what the other ones do. I've, I've typed this so many times, who even freaking knows? Um, it's, I think I is case insensitive, maybe. Uh, anyway, if you want to find a definition of a function in a code base without an IDE, uh, let's look at draw finish. And you can kind of work out which one of these is the definition, maybe. You look for one that, like, yeah, doesn't have a semicolon at the end. So that's vi uh, draw ee draw source draw, and that's line 188 draw.c, and that's line 188. So this is, uh, oh boy, we're going to get into gift tags. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. So we have this buffer here, and what we're putting into it are a series of gift tags. Uh, a gift tag is kind of like the primitive unit that we send into the GIF that then knows how to set things in the GS. And so the, pr the, the core principle of a gift tag is that it's a list of things to set registers inside the graphic synthesizer to. Um, we, t we give it a list of registers that we're going to set, uh, kind of, like packed into this, this very specific bit pattern. And PS2 SDK has these functions that do it, and it kind of hides some of what's actually happening here. So what is actually happening here? We're building a gift tag. Uh, we're building a command that we're sending to the graphic synthesizer. Uh, we're, we're writing to a register called AD. And what AD means is that we are setting a register directly. So so we're telling the graphic synthesizer we're writing to this AD, uh, or we're telling a GIF rather, we're writing to this AD register. And what this AD register does is then goes and references another graphic synthesizer register. If you think that sounds confusing, it is. And this setup is basically all because uh, they, they pack this four bit encoding for registers so that 
commonly used registers like XYZ coordinates, uh, texture coordinates, color. Uh, you know, you can have these very dense uh, lists of vertices that gets that gets sent to the GIF, but there are way more registers that can fit into four bits. And so one of the uh, the 16 options is this AD, which then means that you can set other registers. And if that isn't clear, it's going to get clearer as we do this, because we're going to see this guy AD quite a lot. Uh, and then the, the next part of the gift tag and the final part of the gift tag is going to be uh, that we're setting this GS register, the finish register, to one. And that tells the graphic synthesizer that we're done drawing with the frame. I don't know exactly what that means to the graphic synthesizer, but it's what you do at the end of drawing, okay? Uh, and I have learned this through observation. There's a lot of technical details I don't understand about a PlayStation 2, but I know that when you're done drawing for a frame, you set the GS finish register to one, okay? Um, thank you, by the way, to the 10 people stopping by and watching this. Wow, I love it. I was expecting no one to come and watch this, so I'm, I'm really excited to see people here. Uh, so, we're using this AD register in GIF to set a register in GS, uh, and that's, that's, that's what we need to do. And now we need to send this using DMA. So, DMA, channel, send, normal. There are two DMA modes that we care about, and again, we're going to talk a hell of a lot more about DMA modes as this goes on, but for now, all we're going to do is use a DMA mode called normal. Uh, that is as opposed to using a DMA mode called chain. Chain is where you have a bunch of direct memory access uh, requests linked together. So you say, send a bunch of memory from here, send a bunch of memory from there, send a bunch of memory from here, you link them all up together, you kick them all off, and they have them in the background. We're using normal mode, which means we have one buffer, and we're going to send one buffer at a time. If you want to maximize your, your PlayStation 2 bus performance, you have to use DMA chains. If you don't really care, uh, if you're happy for things to go a little bit slower, we can just use normal mode. So that's what we're going to do for now. Uh, DMA channel gif buff Cool. So, and so we're going to tell it to send, uh, starting from the address of this buffer, we're going to send the amount of things we've written to this buffer, which, you know, uh, th we this function writes some stuff to the buffer and then returns the new head. Uh, so this is where, you know, the, like, the buffer starts up here, Q ends up here, Q ends up here, Q ends up here. We subtract the buffer from Q, we get the number of things in the buffer. Beautiful. Easy. Easy. Uh, and then we want to actually wait for this as well before we return. Cool. So, this is a little bit of code which initializes uh, the graphic synthesizer. And I actually, we're not using that Z buffer, so let's not even do anything with it. I thought we were going to use it. Apparently we don't have to. Uh, and this all looks good. So, let's, uh, let's do it. GS init. And I might have missed something here, okay? Oh, and then we're also going to return zero. Eventually, I might actually return error codes in these functions, but for now, I'm just going to return zero. Uh, <laughs> makes my life a bit easier. So what did I say the arguments were? Width, height, PSM, PSMZ. Uh, so our width is going to be 664, our height's going to be 480. Uh, PSM, PSMZ. I need some constants for this, some special predefined constants. Uh, PSM... Let's use PSM32, that sounds good, or so, well, some of these are just basically for PlayStation 1 compatibility, PSM4s for like uh, images with palettes, so let's just go 32, that sounds pretty safe, uh, GS PSM32, and then we need PSMZ, which is going to be similar, I think it's GS PSMZ8, can we just go like an 8-bit depth buffer, do we need to do, do we need to go crazy? Uh, okay, we can't go 8. Do we just go 32 for this as well? If there's anyone in the chat who knows which uh, depth buffer setting is optimal, that would be beautiful. Uh, cool, 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 cool. So, PSMZ. I guess let's go 32 for now. <laughs> it just feels like a safe default. Uh, and then what was the other thing? V mode, G mode. Uh, graph mode I think that's there I don't I need to remember what I'm actually uh, where did we use V mode V mode graph set mode uh, graph mode at least oh no V mode G mode yeah no V mode V mode is like pal NTSC right 
G mode, yeah. All right. EE -E, graph source graph dot C uh, mode. So where's graph initialize? So I mean, I've basically just rewritten this function, which is not the best, but. Again, the idea and the reason I've rewritten this and had a tendency to rewrite these functions in the past is this kind of code, in my opinion, is quite messy. And I think I can actually come up with a better abstraction for uh, building up these buffers and building up these these GIF packets. Okay, um, it, In practice, I don't know. But all of this code depends on this really gross pattern of like allocate an arbitrary buffer, put some stuff into it. And, I, I guess the other thing I'm concerned about in the long run here, just just quickly, if I'm allocating a buffer in a function and then calling a, a DMA request, a direct memory access transfer request, where this is going to send some stuff to another part of memory, and then I return from that function without waiting, I don't know what happens to this buffer. Um, so I probably need to be a little bit, either make sure I'm always waiting in this case, and for initialization code, there's no problem waiting here, but this is another kind of thing to think about. Um, with, with this pattern and with the idea of uh, just kind of having arbitrary buffers in the middle of functions. Um, mode. Let's just find, let's just find where NTSC stuff is defined. Graph mode NTSC. Uh, that, that's literally what I want. That's literally what I'm looking for here. So graph mode NTSC. Uh, and it's either interlaced or field. Let's go field for now. Uh, I think this is good. I think this is good. So if I run this, what happens? Uh, this is still complaining at me, which is a really, really annoying. Uh, oh, got to actually tell it to run. Oh yeah, and I actually need the name of the um, need the name of the image, don't I? So, if I make here, oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I need to include quite a lot of things here. <laughs> oh, of course. Um, so, the first thing I need to include, I've got all this graph stuff, and this is in a header called, I believe, there's draw dot h. Let's see, include. Uh, gspsm.h, that's for like these headers, uh, include gsgp.h, I think I might need this for some of, actually I'm not using register names yet, so maybe not this yet, uh, include dma.h, let's include dma tags as well, this should be all I need for now I think, uh, Graph mode field, graph enabled. I, I think I need to include graph.h as well. Graph in this case meaning graphics. Um, kind of an awkward, yeah, there we go. Awkward, uh, oop. yeah, awkward shortening of it. I've got somewhere, yeah, just a gross width, height. And then DMA channel, oh. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, git. I misspelled the DMA channel. Perfect. Okay, so we're not linking against the right libraries here, uh, which is which is fine. That is something we can definitely do something about. I believe this is as simple as just saying uh, in our make file we need ee libs equals. I'm. I think it's l graph, right? if memory serves. So we're just telling it to, uh, let's, I think L drawer as well. We're just telling it to add these libraries to our, uh, to our executable. Uh, L, we need L DMA as well. Anything else that's good, just while I'm thinking of it. There we go. That actually built something. So let's see what happens when we run it now. Uh, if this doesn't work, the next thing I'm going to try is actually packaging this in an ISO because I don't know what PS2 SDK is doing to actually run this. So let's 
package this into an ISO. I promise it isn't that hard. Uh, there are going to be two things that we need. The first is a file called system.cnf and we're deliberately naming this in uppercase if that seems weird. Uh, we need, we need, there's a line uh, th this is basically just an arbitrary file format that every single PS2 ISO has. Um, if I'd have thought a little bit more about this ahead, I would be able to open up a PS2 ISO for you and show you this, but you're going to have to take my word for it. Every single PS2 ISO, if you take a PS2 game, and you can do this at home, take a PS2 disc, put it in your computer, open up the ISO, in the root directory of the ISO uh, is a file that will have pretty much exactly this. Uh, CD-ROM 0. Right. Uh, instead of a nice file name like this, it'll be something like, so a general, it'll be like SCUS1431. It'll be an ID number for the game. SCUS being uh, Sony Computer America, SCES if it's a European game. For us, our game is called test.elf. And for some reason you put the semicolon one at the end. I don't know what that means. Uh, v mode equals NTS. You also tell it what mode to boot into, what video mode. Cool. So that file has to be at the root of our ISO, and other than that, the only other thing we need is to actually build an ISO that has that file test.elf in it, and then that will run. The, the PlayStation 2 will know how to boot that. A real PlayStation 2 will have other issues, um, but <laughs> you know, like with it being a burnt disk, but um, yeah, that that's the core of making something run in a PlayStation 2. Uh, so let's make ISO... Uh, test.iso okay and to make it we're going to add a rule for building it uh, our rule is going to be for iso target it's going to rely on the binary and uh, we're going to use this command called make iso fs we're going to pass it in a couple of fun arguments And we're going to tell it just to add two files to it. First, our binary, and second, system.cnf. Um, we not yeah. Uh, okay, well let's. Oh, help. Uh, I hate that. I hate when things output their help to standard error rather than standard in. Uh, to the... Oh, that's not... Here we go. Where's this Where's this L flag? What do you do? Um, L, it means that we're allowed to have full file names. And the other one, uh, well, O is just telling us what, what the name of the output file is. So now if we make... Uh, let's get rid of test.elf. Weird that it doesn't pick that rule up. Um, it might just be because of how top level rules work. Uh, test.iso. There we go. So now we have a t an, an ISO file to test with. This will hopefully be a little bit better. Okay. Um, let's just get rid of our wrong thing. It's kind of terrifying, by the way, uh, just doing monitor capture. I don't know if, if, uh, <laughs> if you guys have experienced that. Um, Workspace, PlayStation 2, 3D test, test.iso, swap disk, boot ISO, file not found. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so something has gone very, very sour uh, with our construction of our ISO. Test.elf, system. Oh, it's because, um, it's because our file is an uppercase, right? Or is it? Man, I don't actually know the best way to um, preview the contents of an ISO on Linux. Is this going to be on YouTube? Yeah, I'm going to put all this on YouTube. Uh, no, that is that is VLC. How? What's a good way to view the contents of an ISO in Linux? Um, I don't. I don't know. I don't know the tools. That's uh, it's not great. Weird. So, uh, what what is likely here is that the the file has like the wrong name in the ISO. Maybe, um, at the very least, the PlayStation understands our config file, right? 
uh, it's trying to load, or a, or a PlayStation emulator at least, right? I, I've run similar things on real PlayStation 2s. It, it works, right? You can boot a disc like this uh, over the network using OPL, right? It finds our version. It finds uh, it finds our disk region. You know, it, it understands our path. Um, hmm, CD-ROM, CD-ROM 0. That's the right device. That's where a standard disk gets mounted to as far as PlayStation 2 file paths are concerned. Interesting. I'm going to take I'm going to wheel my chair back and take a sip of my tea while I ponder this question. Man. And th this is basically the experience of building stuff on a PlayStation 2, right? You look at it and you're like, okay, nothing works. <laughs> now what? <laughs> it's uh, it's kind of a nightmare. CD-ROM zero. Hmm. Test. T-E-S-T. -T. Oh. Oh. I see it. I see it. Elf. I, mi I, oh man, that one hurts. That one hurts. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know if you guys uh, noticed that quite as much, but I, I misspelled test.elf. Test okay, so here we go. System boot ISO. And it's a bad disk again. Weird. I don't know why it's so fussy about this suddenly. Um, what if I like load my other other test disk? See that one runs. So this is another uh, test I was doing with like pushing some some uh, JF some GIF tags around, and this one runs. So if you want to see like something that's actually freaking working a bit more, uh, where are we? A large font huge font. Maybe I have to rerun it for that to take effect. That's a little bit better, isn't it? You can actually read that. Um, this is this is some stuff running, right? These are my print commands running. Uh, Nero, where did I learn all this? I have learned this over the last year and a half of just like really, uh, really rough trial and error, basically, right? Uh, I have done... I, if there's one thing that's gotten me through learning about PlayStation 2 stuff, it's having PS2 SDK and it's using this, like, if I want to understand something, grep RNI, uh, DMA, what's a, uh, DMA send, send normal. So it, it's, it's doing stuff like this. And then you're like, okay, where's this defined, right? So vi, ee, uh, DMA dot C. So line 174. Oh no, that's just a, an invocation. Uh, two hundred thirty-eight, maybe. Yeah, so you can look at where these functions are defined, and you're like, okay, so here's some magic register somewhere in memory. It's setting. Uh, it's it's sending some stuff to it, right? It's checking if some like interrupt flag is, is set. Not sure if this should be here. Interesting. Um, like who knows what. Uh, th like this is something to do with syncing caches with interrupts or not, uh, and then you know we're we're just doing more like weird memory pointer stuff. Um, so so open PS2 SDK, look at cool functions, grep your way around. Um, I also actually have a copy of the PlayStation 2 system manuals, which are extremely useful. They're not good at telling you how to do things, but when you look at something like this, you can then go and like for example DMA register stat. You can kind of look at what address that is um you can then go back and like you know fi find what it maps to in the actual system hardware manual and read some details a lot of the stuff i understand about uh gift tags and, and gift packets does really come from reading system hardware manuals just as much as reading ps2 sdk source and the two of them together you know it's kind of like one gets stuff done and explains nothing and the other explains things but doesn't tell you how to get stuff done so uh Man, I wish something. I wish this would actually work. This is really frustrating. Um, 
I don't know why this is deciding that it doesn't want to be a real PS2 disc. Um, there's got to be something I'm missing, right? And I'm wondering if it's even a library level thing. It's weird. It's weird. Um, well, let, let's add a few other things just while we're going, by the way. Um, let's, we want all errors, and let's say that we're actually writing C99 code, because that's really cool. Uh, maybe... Just looking at another project I've got here, I have a linker flag set here, so let's see if this helps. PSTSDK, E, com. I suspect this is actually it, right? Uh, there is some some linker thing isn't being set properly, and it's meaning that the PlayStation uh, doesn't doesn't like our disk. So let's see if this is enough to get it to run. And unfortunately, unfortunately, I'm uh, having to. You are not up to date. I've updated your make file. Test .iso. Okay, so let's see if this boots. That's the wrong disk. Swap disk. Boot ISO. And it still doesn't like it. That is infuriating, man. PlayStation uh, P development. PSP development's really cool. I recommend it. It Basically, to me, it seems like it's a lot like PlayStation 2 development, but a little bit less frustrating. There are better libraries out there, there's slightly better tooling out there, and uh, <laughs> I don't know, people have done more stuff with it, right? Like, there's there's a lower potential, like, upper cap, as far as I can tell. The PlayStation 2 gets really crazy with, like, fully utilizing the vector units and stuff, but the PSP still has a lot of interesting stuff. If, if you're passionate about, like, weird game programming, I guess, and, um, you know, I, I feel like uh, weird game programming is good. Like, if you write an OpenGL program, you have to do so much. Uh, you have to understand a lot about, like, windowing systems and stuff. And, you know, maybe uh, maybe that seems a bit silly when I'm struggling against, like, even getting something to run in a basic sense. But once you have something running on a PlayStation 2, you control the hardware, right? There is no memory management on a PlayStation 2. If I want to put something in any address of memory, I can just make. So, like, let me go into my main here, okay? Uh, main. Hold on, let me let me get out of frickin' Docker. Okay, I can just like in my main function, uh, I can say volatile. I can make a pointer, and I can say that it's. I can just that that address now. I own that address. I can just write whatever the hell I want to that address. Uh, P equals twenty twenty three, right? I have just written to a completely arbitrary address in memory. You can't do this on an operating system, right? The PlayStation 2 doesn't have an operating system. There's nothing controlling memory. You can do whatever the hell you want. And that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, so I don't know. There, there's, there's really interesting stuff about developing on a system that really, like, doesn't have anything other than your program running on it at any given time. Cool. So... I really want to wrap up today with actually getting something running. I feel like that would be an excellent place to leave things off. Um, open a ROM. Oh, do you know what's happened? Do you know what has happened? <laughs> I suspect I've just cracked it, okay? Um, or not. It's actually running, right? It's actually running my program. Because the first thing our program does is say hello. And that's actually getting printed here. So we're running code on a PlayStation 2. We've been running code in a PlayStation 2 for a while. It's just afterwards, it goes and does some other crap. Uh, which is, which is kind of sad. Right? I want it to loop forever. I, n I want it to never exit and get to this screen. I want it to just keep going. Hmm. Weird. But the, the infinite loop definitely seems to be the way to go here. Um, this should loop forever, right? <sighs> if I can spell. 
Who would have thought that spelling would be the greatest barrier to me being an excellent... Oh, I didn't make the... I didn't make the ISO. I didn't construct a new ISO. So. Our code runs. And then we loop forever and it never gets through and it never prints that screen. We've been, we've been running PlayStation 2 code all along. That very first test I did was running code and probably would have printed something out to the screen here. This is us. This is our code on a real PlayStation 2. Uh, and we've set up a video mode, right? So we can see up the top of the screen... Once I move my cursor, it disappears, but like just above my cursor here, 853 by 480, right? Let's change that. Let's change that to something else. Okay, let's tell the graphics synthesizer that we're initializing a different video mode. Let's set it to like 600 instead. And this is gonna, this is a fairly wacky resolution. Um, let's, right, but we're gonna see a different number up here. 640 by 480. There we go. So we are not only initializing code in a PlayStation 2 and calling printf, um, we are actually telling the graphics synthesizer something. And PlayStation, uh, PCSX2 is interpreting this and initializing different graphics modes based on what we send it. This is code running on a PlayStation 2 emulator. And this code would do things on a PlayStation 2 as well. It would allocate VRAM and it would very successfully show a black screen and not crash. I can promise you that. And uh, one day I'm going to have a setup where I can actually do that live on stream. But today is not that day. Uh, why, why are you indented weirdly? Why? What's happened to my indenting here? Okay, that's good. So, we're definitely initializing DMA channels because we're then sending things on those DMA channels. We're sending things on the GIF channel, right? And for people who haven't seen my beautiful, beautiful art yet, this is what it looks like. EE cores here. We're ignoring the vector units. We are sending information directly from the EE core through this path called path, path 3 into the graphics interchange. Uh, it's being received in the graphics interchange. It's telling it to set a register called GS draw finish. Uh, and that is kicking off the drawing of one whole frame in the graphics synthesizer. Beautiful. Mwah. I love it. I love it. Okay. Clearing the screen is really hard. Um, clearing the screen is really, really hard. There are two approaches you can take to clearing the screen on a PlayStation 2. You can either try and directly copy blocks of pixels into GS memory, right? So uh, basically taking like a software renderer approach. You can draw... You, you, if you imagine like an old DOS game, right? Like old DOS games like like software rendered Quake. It draws from the CPU into a buffer in memory and then it shows that buffer, you know, it presents it onto the screen. You could do exactly that on a PlayStation 2. You can just have a buffer in EE memory, uh, so a buffer over here, and then you can chunk that up into small rectangles and send that chunk by chunk over this path into the graphics uh, into the graphics interface and then dump it directly into uh, your frame buffer memory and it'll get drawn to the screen. That's one way of putting pixels onto the screen on the PlayStation 2. And the PS2 SDK example for clearing the screen uses this method. It generates rectangles, it copies them directly into the frame buffer. I'm pretty sure it does something similar to that, right? Uh, it isn't using the rasterizer in any way. The other way you could clear the screen is to just draw two big ass triangles over the whole screen uh, that are a fixed color. That's the method I would prefer to do. Uh, in this case, I'm actually going to do neither, and I'm just going to ignore clearing our frame buffer. We're just going to fill our frame buffer up with absolute garbage, just to get something on the screen. So, build a buffer with triangle data. This actually isn't going to be too hard, uh, and we're going to use no utilities here whatsoever. This We're just going to build a buffer, we're going to put some crap in it, and then we're going to send it into, uh, <laughs> in, into where we need it to go. So, let's make a function called draw. Okay, uh, we're going to build another one of these buffers. Let's make it a little bit bigger. And actually, this makes me a little bit nervous. Let's make this a little bit bigger too. It can't hurt to be a little bit bigger. It can't hurt to be a little bit wasteful with our stack space. This is a pretty small program. Uh, Shoutouts to Crib poking his head in from this stream. How you doing, man? How are you doing? Uh, a few people following as well. Thank you, Salty, for following. Awesome to see some Quake people coming and being interested in the dark side of my life, right? You know me as a degenerate gamer. You don't know me as a degenerate programmer. The, the, the two worlds are crossing over. Uh, okay, so we have a buffer. There are 50 things in our buffer, and we're going to do the same thing as before. Uh, we're going to kind of have this... We're going to have this head of our buffer. And as we put things into our buffer that we're going to send, th these are our direct GPU commands, right? So imagine, rather than OpenGL, you know, imagine talking directly to your NVIDIA GTX 1060. You tell it, you know, this is the format I'm about to send you data in, and then sending it vertex after vertex in this very raw way. Weird example, but surprisingly accurate to what we're going to do. So the first thing a GIF packet needs is... 
uh, a gift tag, okay? A gift tag. Actually, I, I built a thing for visualizing these. Hold on, let me see if I can find it. Um, <laughs> thank you, by the way, TNA, sending me some really helpful Discord messages just on the side here. So, uh, let, me, let me see if I can find this visualization real quick. Uh, draw, that's not it. Uh, oh, where did I save it? Where did I save it? I've been playing around with some cool visualizations lately in Godot, and I actually built one for gift tags. So, that's making it... Here we go. Okay, so, this is a tool that's going to visualize a gift tag for us. And a gift tag is going to have the following information. Sorry this looks a bit janky. Um, <laughs> I'm going to make this look more beautiful in the future. For now, it is the jankiest program to live. Okay, uh, so say we want to draw triangles, uh, which is exactly what we're going to do. A gift tag has to tell the, the graphics synthesizer or the, the graphics interchange what format we're going to set uh, what, what order we're going to set registers in. So, for example, the register to set uh, XYZ coordinates, it's either 0x5 or 0x1. And I'm just going to quickly search uh, uh, XYZ2. It's 5. So, let's say we're drawing a triangle. And we're drawing a triangle that's going to be shaded with color. So, that means we're going to send... Uh, we're going to send a color vertex. Or we're going to send a, a, a one piece of color information, right? An RGB A value, and then we're going to send one position value, an XYZ value, that's vertex one. Then we're going to send another color value, and then another position value, and then another color value, and then another position value. So uh, we tell, we t with this gift tag, we have to tell the, the graphics interface the format we're about to send data in. So that means we're going to send a position, I oh, know, sorry, we're going to send a color, that is 0x1. Then we're going to send a position, that is 0x5. Then we're going to send a color, then we're going to send a position, then we're going to send a color. Uh, and then we're going to send a position. And this is the format of a triangle. Okay, and so uh, th this is a triangle all of its own. N loop is the number of things we're going to send. We're going to send one triangle to start with. Okay, flag, uh, flag tells us something about the format of the... Flag can be zero. Flag's fine. Prim and pre uh, are used for setting a register called the primitive register per loop. We don't care about either of these. We leave them as zero. And EOP uh, tells us that we're at the end of a gift tag. We're going to set this to one because we're going to send these gift tags one at a time. And this is what our gift tag should look like. So the way these get constructed, we have two 64-bit integers. Okay, The first 64-bit integer... Um, it, it tells us what registers we're setting. As we add registers to our list here, they get pushed into this integer from the bottom up, okay? So, uh, 0x... So, 0... Wait, this is backwards. This is backwards. They get added to this integer from the top down, and this is probably a... a, um, a mistake on my part. Do they go bottom up or top down? I'm going to have to refer to the hardware manuals very quickly. Unfortunately, I don't think I can show the hardware manuals on screen, uh, on stream. They are copyrighted material. I don't know if Sony would come after me for showing a hardware manual for a 21-year-old console on stream, but I don't want to risk it. Um, they are they are a little bit iffy. If anyone, by the way, I've got 17 viewers. It's a small audience. Uh, thank you, by the way, to uh, to Vedi, Vedi Tata. Uh, PlayStation, fellow PlayStation 2 developer, good to see some people stopping by in the stream. Some names I recognize in the PlayStation 2 community. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, if anyone out there knows where I can get my hands on a physical copy of the hardware manuals, that would be phenomenal. They came with a Linux kit, I'm pretty sure. Uh, or some hardware manuals came with a Linux kit. I don't know if it's the one that I have. Uh, I think I have, like, the good one, the good developer one. Um, I am looking for the format of a GIF tag, which... Which I will share with you based on my findings. I, I, I won't, of course, share direct content from a copyrighted hardware manual, but I will summarize my interpretation uh, of the learnings of this from this hardware manual. So, uh, that's the VA, VAF code. That's not what I want. GIF control register. That's also not what I want. Here it is. Data format. 149. Yeah, cool, 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 cool. So... Uh, very exciting. Uh, 
found it in the pre. This uh, flag field, by the way. Oh yeah, the flag field, sorry, of course. This is a two-bit value which is going to tell us what mode we're sending data to, uh, what mode we're sending data in. Uh, we're going to use a mode called packed mode where, you know, for each of these registers, so like for here, we're going to have a 128-bit value which corresponds to the XYZ register, uh, to the color register, sorry, then a 128-bit value which corresponds to the XYZ register, then a 128-bit value which corresponds to the color register, then 128-bit value, 128-bit value. For each of these things, we're going to have a 128-bit value, and then we're going to have that n loop times. So uh, here we would have six 128-bit values. Uh, there's also a mode called regList mode, which is more compact, where for each of these you only have 64 bits. And then there's also a mode called image mode, where you can send just chunks of data. Uh, and that's how you, for example, upload textures into GS memory. Okay. Uh, yeah, the first quad word is packed according to the least significant bits. So, these are getting loaded in backwards. My visualization visualization is a little bit awkward. Uh, this should be the these sh this should be going right to left instead. So that means that this is what's going to be looked for first. So actually, what I want is what I was going to do the first time. Uh, let's go five one five one. So this is what I want my gift tag to look like. Okay, <laughs> we got there in the end. Um, this is in hexadecimal, by the way. So two 64-bit numbers, this tells us that we're going to have position, uh, color position, color position, color position. And this tells us uh, we're going to have six registers set, we have one loop, and this bit here is set because this is going to be the last packet that we're setting. So we can just directly jam this uh, into our buffer, <laughs> right? So Q, um, how do I want to do this? Do I want to, I actually... I want to just check how quad word t is defined. Common include. Gotta love tam types dot h. Uh, Q word. Okay, so I should be able to. Mm. Look, do you know what I think is actually easier? I think it's easier to just treat this as a dumb byte array. Um, oh no, but then I have to. Oh, I've got to cast things. Okay. So, do I remember the C syntax for unions off the top of my head? Uh, double word zero equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 zeros in a 64-bit number. Uh, and we want to set the bottom six of these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We want it to be 5, 1, 5, 1, 5, 1. This is what we just saw, right? And then q dot dw1, uh, except it's got to be... right? Uh, then this is going to be just another magic number constant. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Uh, this is 1 and then 8. Oh, oh. Cool. So, uh, uh, color, position, color, position, color, position, times 6 EOP times 1 what keyboard is that this this is my beautiful uh, royal kludge keyboard it cost me $40 off of uh, Aliexpress <laughs> I've been using it pretty much, I, I, I've been a full-time programmer since November 2018. I've had this keyboard pretty much that whole time. It's something I bought more or less with my first paycheck, and uh, it's uh, it's, been, it's been smashing it out. Colors are in RGB. Uh, colors, we're gonna, colors, colors are in like super RGB. Colors that we set, I'll show you, we're about to get there. The first thing we're gonna set is a color. So, uh, Q equals... Q plus one, yeah. We could also just do Q plus plus, and that's probably actually more idiomatic. Okay, so so we're literally just advancing to the next place in the buffer. So the first thing we put here is a color, and a color is a 128-bit value, and it's a real freaking annoying 128-bit value. Um, where? 
Where am I running this? Sorry, I've just got a window stuck open here. Um, cool. So, the cool thing about Pact Mode... Oh, Sheepy ABC, thank you so much for the follow. Thank you. Uh, we are going beautifully. Oh, we are, we're making progress towards actually pushing some stuff out onto a PlayStation 2 screen, which is exciting. I don't think I have too much longer tonight, but I'm going to try and get through a whole buffer, push it out, hopefully get something on the screen, and then uh, that'll be a nice place to cool it, and I'll be back tomorrow to do some more. So, we're setting not only RGB, we're setting RGBAQ, okay? You've heard of RGB, you've heard, heard of RGBA, I promise you've never heard of RGBAQ, because it's just a weird PlayStation 2 specific thing. Um... Q, the value of Q is actually used by texture mapping, right? So so we set, uh, like, UV values. Um, then there's this other value Q as well. Basically, we shouldn't care what it means. Wait, no, sorry. Q's, Q is part of the color value. I, it's a whole thing. I don't really know what it is. <laughs> Might be the theme of the day. So... Uh, color values are going to be, what's that, 7 bits, which is kind of weird, <laughs> or 8 bits, they're going to be 8 bits, so yeah, 8 bits per pixel, nothing too weird here, so we want to say Q, DW, 0, uh, okay, so, red and Uh, we're just, we're just going to have to do some bit fiddling real quick. Uh, we'll, we'll have some constants for red, green, and blue as we go. We'll come back and define these later. Um. <laughs> oh, sheepy. A man after my own heart. DWM, Vim, PST programming. It can't get any better, right? Um, so, green. We have one bit, one byte for this as well, except this one is going to be shifted over 31 bits or 32 bits i think i think 31 bits uh dw1 so basically these values are just like really arbitrarily laid out <laughs> here and we just have to deal with it uh blue and 0xff and then we're also going to combine that with a magical alpha value you again you just have to deal with it i don't need to mask that with anything and then we can right shift that again by 32 31 32? I want the first bit to be in... No, I need to... It, it's 32. It's 32. What am I doing? Okay. So we've got a color packet. Uh, we've got a color entry, rather, in our packet. And now we need a position entry. And this is going to be similarly uh, contrived, I guess. <laughs> oh, yeah. And the other cool thing about this is that uh, XYZ coordinates are in 16-bit fixed point... Uh... uh 16-bit fixed-point numbers. The fractional part is going to be 4 bits. Uh, Z is given in 24-bit unsigned integers, which is cool. There's also this F value, which I, I can't quite remember what it does. Oh no, sorry, that's the wrong format. Um, there, are, there are three different registers for setting position information. They all have subtly different behaviours. Um, but we still have to worry about 16-bit fixed point numbers with a 4-bit fractional part. So I think what we do here um, is we go QDW0 equals uh, I think if we just shift a number 4 bits over to the right, it will mostly be the same, right? So if we have 1 so one is going to be like, one is going to be like, uh, if we think about 16 bits, right? It's one, two, right? So if we have one, it's going to look like this. Uh, if we have one in this format, it's going to go, right? So we have four bits at the bottom here, which are going to be for the fractional part. Um, so I guess you can think of it like this. And I think this should still be the number one, right? I'm guessing these top eight bits... I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going to assume this is how it works, and, and until I can be proven otherwise, we're just going to roll with it. Uh, this is also quite similar to the other format, right? Uh, Z, and we're not going to worry about the other part of this number. Cool. 
So actually what we should do is loop here uh, for I. Let's just go super simple with how we store this information for now. We're just going to have a fixed array. That's not what I want at all, is it? I want uh, I plus. We're just going to have nine points in here, okay? So let's say a triangle starts at 10, uh, 0, 0. Then it's going to go to uh give me some good triangle coordinates chat what, where do we draw our triangle we've got a 640 by 480 screen first points up here next points like somewhere over here let's say that's the uh, 600 i'm just going to make these up if someone doesn't give me some numbers uh 600 200 zero then let's say our last one's down here so it's going to be like 20 uh 400 zero screw z we don't want we don't care about z coordinates right z coordinates get out of here um okay we're drawing we're drawing some magic numbers to the screen and then we're gonna send this as a packet this is gonna put six things in a gif in a in a gif tag and then we're just gonna say dma channel send normal and dma wait fast uh, DMA channel gif. Uh, what's our what's our argument order here again? Buff q minus buff zero zero. Okay, cool. So it's the initial address, the length of the buffer, and then we send two zeros for some reason, and then we wait for it. Uh, and that's how we draw something to the screen. But we still need to tell the GS that we're done drawing as well. So actually, let's let's wrap this up in its own function. I think that's the done thing here. And you know, there, there's a lot uh, there's a lot of improvement to be done when it comes to like splitting these things up into better abstractions. We'll get there, but this is rough for now. GS finish. Okay, so we've got a triangle, uh, and then we're gonna call GS finish. And I believe if we're lucky, if we're lucky, this could work. This could put some stuff out on the screen, then we're also going to return zero. Because uh, I'm ambitious that we will eventually actually check the return value of these functions for errors. So, uh, let's draw. Oh, I need to define red, green, and blue, right? Uh, uh, let's red. Uh, okay, we've got some errors, but that's okay. Uh, I didn't put an equal sign here. This is getting shifted beyond the width of the type. So this is always awkward, right? Um, when you have a, a you know, an 8-bit value and you need to shift it into a bigger type uh, and you get these warnings. Uh, so you can either cast this to an int Red, red, blue, green. <laughs> okay, I'm a little bit off spec, right? I'm a little bit off spec. DMA channel. I also, I also misspelled a function name. Uh, DMA channel send normal. What did I get? What did I spell wrong here? Spelling. It's the absolute bane of my existence. Uh, channel. DMA channel send DMA DMA channel send normal DMA channel send I'm sure that's right. Okay, well we'll come back. We'll circle back to that. Maybe I've done something else weird. Um maybe I misread that error. Where are we? Try. We need to put an equal sign here, and also I'm gonna make these in unsign. I'm gonna make these ints. It's fine. 
we're dealing with safe values here. It's okay. Um, scripted value is neither. Oh yeah, I <sighs> control reaches end of a non-void function. That's also not great. Again, I have ambitions that I'll actually check the return values of these at some point and not just return zero. Uh, I need to tell you that you're actually. Uh, in function draw dma oh while I'm missing I think I was looking in the wrong uh, place for my misspelled function name left shift greater than width of type oh yeah because I'm shifting a 32 bit type 32 bits over uh, also, I don't think it likes scalar initialization in this way. I think maybe you're supposed to do it with square brackets. Yeah, that's happier. Okay, uh, and then the only other thing to get rid of this last warning is going to be uh, making this 6040. Uh, Oh, that was, that was annoying. <laughs> and then we need to include int types. We need to, we need to drag in our new 64-bit uh, type. Okay, so. That still doesn't like it, but it's okay. Uh, make test.iso. We've built an ISO. What happens when we run it? Is it going to complain? Is it going to crash? Is it going to run? It runs. It does something. Oh boy, it does something. It doesn't draw anything, but oh boy, it does something. Uh, interesting, uh, <laughs> interesting GDK errors here. I don't know if that's me. I don't know if that's weird. Okay. So something is happening. Uh, first off, we're initializing our mode really weirdly, and that's not great. The other thing I think would actually be good to do is to print out these buffers uh, so that we know what we're building and what we're sending because maybe these are in the wrong order. It's kind of not obvious which order uh, these double words get set in. So let's make a function that prints out a buffer. Uh, and this is going to be quite a dumb function for now. Sorry, I've been writing Golang. <laughs> uh, let's T B. I less than len, I, I plus plus. Okay, so for each quad word, uh, print I think there's a 64 bit types as far as the PlayStation 2 is concerned, so B, DW0, B, DW1. And this should be the right order, right? And we also need to put a new line after this, of course. Uh, Again, ambitions that we'll uh, actually check this at some point. So before we do a DMA send, let's print buffer buff Q minus buff. We might need to cast this to an end. I don't know. C is fine. C just likes to assume everything's in it, right? We're not going to get a warning. We don't even get a warning on that. Perfect. Uh, integer arithmetic, easy. Bracket placement is making you uncomfortable. Um, Am I creating an emulator? No, uh, I'm writing a game to run on a PlayStation 2, but for now I'm using an emulator. I don't like this. Uh, I'm using an emulator to test it because testing on real hardware is a bit of a pain. Uh, Andy Dragonchew, by the way, thank you for the follow. You've been hanging around. It's awesome to see some people hanging out, enjoying some PlayStation 2 development. Um, but yeah, no, so so I'm building, building something uh, and testing it in an emulator because it's easier. Uh, our hello is okay. We're not printing anything because I forgot to actually rebuild the ISO. Now let's rerun this ISO. Let's see if something else gets printed out. And it does. And that is not the right buffer at all. Oh dear. Uh, that is because, I'm very, very silly. I... Yeah, hold on. Uh... 
Uh, I mean, that'll work, but it's just not, like, this feels... I shouldn't be doing it like this, but this is kind of consistent with how I've treated quad words everywhere else. Um, the problem there was I was I was just printing the same address uh, six times. Cool. That looks good, uh, but the buffer printing is still a little bit awkward because... Uh, because... Uh, I need to add. I need to add width specifiers. PS2 too old. Oh, the, the, look! You can't call the PlayStation too old without calling me old. It was my first console. It's what I grew up with. Um, the, the PlayStation 2 programming is really interesting, right? If you missed my awesome diagramming earlier, the hardware is just absolutely bonkers, right? Uh, we're currently working on pushing information from the E core into the graphics interface to set registers in the graphic synthesizer, which leads to triangle rasterization, right? It's it's super involved. Um, it's super weird. It's super awesome. I love it. Uh, I need to add a width specification to these. I think if I just put 08 out the front, we should be good. 08 LLX feels like the right input specification. Uh, the right output specification, rather. Make test.iso. Uh, 16, not 8. My bad. <laughs> Try making a game in SDL. SDL is really fun. Uh, I've I've done a bit of programming in SDL before. Uh, I actually m did some stuff with the PlayStation 2 where I had an SDL and a PlayStation 2 backend for a code base. So like a simple 2D game, you could move a thing around on the screen. It compiled for Windows, Linux, and PlayStation 2. That was really fun. It was fun to build a graphic graphics abstraction that worked with all three. Um, but I was building on top of GS Kit, and I kind of want to do stuff a little bit closer to the metal on the PlayStation 2 because I think it's more interesting. So here is a packet. This looks like it might be correct. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, now I'm going to compare this to what the hardware manual says I should have. Um, the weird thing about this as well, by the way, um, it's, we're reading left to right, so this is the first element in the buffer, this is the second, but the first bit of the first element is on the right hand side, so it's a little bit awkward to read, right? So this is our red component, uh, this is our green component, and this is our blue component. It's a bit all over the place. Uh, maybe I should print these in the opposite order, I don't know, but then I think that would be even more confusing. Maybe, maybe printing two to a line is also confusing, but this kind of matches how the hardware manual wants to print them. It's just the hardware manual prints this bit on the left and this bit on the right. So actually we've got them backwards. This bit has to come first, um, but we can fix that very easily. So when you're building a GIF tag, the first thing, uh, this part comes first and then the register part comes second. Cool. Then we have red, green, and blue, and this I think is fine. I think this is uh, accurate to what we want it to look like. Yep, the first eight bits are red, then bits... So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, that's that's what we're setting. This is masking and setting correctly, uh, and then this is, this is correct as well, so that's good. Um, so red, green, blue, a lot of waste uh, in this format, but that's that's what happens. Um, then we expect our X to be, so what's this, AO, so that's uh, zero, wait, AO, um, zero, one, zero, one, zero, 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 zero. So one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero, that's 10, yeah, well, we're setting, this looks, this looks like it's encoding everything correctly. This is a bit harder to tell. Um, this looks good. This looks good. So now that we've swapped a GIF tag to actually be correct, uh, make, uh, make, let's see if 
something magically happens now. I'm, I'm not expecting anything to happen. Though we're printing out a correct buffer. And that's a that's a win. That's a pretty huge win. Uh, so, I'm going to have to stop. My brain's kind of melting. PlayStation 2 stuff really kind of takes a toll on you after a while. But this has been an awesome stream. We've had viewers. We've had. I was expecting no one to watch this, and we've had, like, between 10 and, and 17 people, 17, 18 people, uh, and just another, just some more follows coming in. Flopper X3, uh, what's the, Al, Al Hendy, Al Hendy. Thank you so much, guys. Means a lot. Um, be sure to, be sure to come back and, and tune in if you want to see more weird PlayStation 2 programming. I've talked a lot about, uh, how this stuff is going to kind of look in broad strokes. I've drawn some fun pictures. Um, I hope everyone's enjoyed it. I want to do this more. I've got a really good setup now. Um, you know, I'm running Linux for everything, so it's really easy for me to just, like, do PlayStation 2 dev. I was on Windows before, and, you know, it, it just made doing this kind of thing a little bit tougher, but now DWM, Vim, it's all just at my fingertips all the time. So, in this stream, we got a PlayStation 2 file set up, we built it, we learned how to, how to build a system.cnf, uh, what goes into that, right? We're actually running code that will actually run on a PlayStation 2. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, and, and we learned how to actually structure GIF tags that the graphic synthesizer then decodes. And it's been slow going. But from here, we can now really start to fiddle around with our X, Y, and Z values. Uh, the, the next easy thing to try and pick at is how this offset is set up. Because I suspect that might be part of what's, uh, what's causing this to fail. Um, yeah, so... So, so it's been fun. It's been fun trying to get something happening. Uh, Andy Dragon Chew wants to see some SDL. I'd definitely play around with SDL on stream. Uh, I would be keen to do that. SDL is a lot of fun. Like I said, you can get stuff up and running pretty quickly. I was playing around with WebGL the other day. I'd be interested to try and port that WebGL then, uh, you know, it, onto Linux. And I'd probably do that via SDL because SDL has some cool libraries and stuff. Dorvo, uh, another follow as well. Thank you guys so much. I'll, I'll try and get some alerts and stuff set up. Um... But yeah, no, this has been awesome. Uh, this has been really awesome. Thank you. Be sure to tune back in. We'll do more stuff. This is going to go up on YouTube. I'm going to put a YouTube channel up at some point. I don't have one for this stuff yet. I do have another YouTube channel where I talk about gaming stuff. That's all there. Um, but if you want to check out my stuff in the meantime, I have a website which I'm going to put in chat. That is coding.tommarks.xyz. I'm Tom Marks. This is programming. Isn't, isn't it wonderful? Isn't it wonderful just like smashing out some code on a weird hacky project to run on 20 year old hardware? So thanks guys. Uh, I'm going to go before I just keep crapping on. I'll see you next time. There will be a next time. Hopefully tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>